This is Dr. Holt, and in this problem I'm going to be using the second law of rotation, Newton's second law of rotation, and here I have an Atwood machine. It's constructed using a hoop with spokes that have neg negligible mass. The 2.3 kilogram mass of the pulley is concentrated on its rim, so it's meaning like this. So what we really have is a thin cylindrical shell. Okay which is at a distance of 24.8 centimeters from the axle. So the radius is going to be 24.8, so we'll go ahead and convert that immediately to 0.248 meters would be the radius. All right, here I have a mass on the right, 1.25, and the left, 1.6. We want to find the magnitude of the linear acceleration of the hanging masses. Okay, to do that problem, the first thing I'd recommend is go ahead and draw a free body diagram of really all three of these. We're going to draw one of this 1.6, one of the 1.25, and one of this pulley system itself. So I'll draw the 1.6 first. I'll do that right over here. So we'll draw the arrows coming down like this. And now what you need to do is decide which way you want this object to accelerate. And again, it's not so much, it's not really that important that you get the direction right. Uh, if you can, great, but the signs later on will show you which way it's correct. Obviously, you have more mass here than here, so um, the object is going to accelerate downward. So again, this is not part of the free body diagram. This is going to be mass times acceleration. So now I'll start labeling everything. All right, so here I'll have 1.6 times 9.8. I'll make this be T1 and I'll label this as T1 over here. And while we're here, I'll make this T2. Now, one thing to note is when you have a pulley that has mass, T1 T2 are no longer equal to one another. All right, and the other thing I'm going to have is just going to be 1.6 times my acceleration. All right, from that, go back. We'll sum forces in the Y direction here, and we're going to set that equal to mass times acceleration. All right, go ahead and we'll write the equations based upon what we have here. We have T1 minus 1.6 times 9.8 is equal to the mass, which is 1.6 times A. There's no reason to put parentheses. Let me eliminate those. 1.6 1.6 times A. Now this sign has to be negative because I'm in line in. It goes down to be negative and it goes up to be positive. All right, 1.6 times 9.8 is 15.68. So I'll get T1 minus 15.68 is equal to minus 1.6A. Okay? What you want to do now is go ahead and just solve for T1. So T1 would equal to 15.68 minus 1.6 times A. All right, now we'll go ahead and draw the free body diagram for the 1.25. And come over here. And the arrow coming down here. We've got the tension coming back up here, T2. Now, since this one accelerated downward, this one's going to accelerate upward, so we'll just put mass times acceleration over here. <coughs> We'll label this as T2. This would be 1.25 times 9.8. This would be 1.25 times my acceleration. Now we go ahead and solve for that. The summation of forces in the Y is equal to mass times acceleration in the Y. All right, so T2 minus 1.25 times 9.8 must equal to 1.25 times A. Now 1.25 times 9.8 is going to be 12.25. So T2 minus 12.25 is equal to 1.25 times A. Solve for T2. T2 would be 1.25 times A plus 12.25. I guess there's no reason to really put a parenthesis around that. I'm glad you just take that out right there.
Okay, so that's what T2 is. All right, so now we have those two values. We have T1 and we have T2 in terms of A. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just draw a free body diagram of the, of the pulley itself. Now you can do that now or do that later. It really makes no difference. So the pulley's sitting in here like this. I will have a T1 and a T2 coming here. So let's go ahead and put the arrows down here. I have an arrow down here. Now don't ever forget the mass times gravity of the pulley itself. And then I'm going to have the force coming back up. And that force is the force the bracket's going to be pulling up on the pulley. All right. So now we can go ahead and label this. This is my T1 and this is my T2. So T1, you just make this into 15 0.68 minus 1.6 times A. And then this is my T2. Scroll down here. I'm going to move that down a little bit so I give you some more space. All right, that value again is just going to be this 1.25 times A plus 12.25. And this is be my mass times gravity of the pulley. And that would be. 2.3 times 9.8 which gives me 22.54 coming down. This will be you can call it force normal if you want. That's a bracket on the pulley. Let me say bracket on pulley. Alright, from that we can go ahead and sum, so sum, sum the forces. The summation of forces and the y here is going to equal zero because this object is not accelerating up or down the pulley itself. So we'd have minus 15.68. And now what we're doing, negating this, plus 1.6 times my acceleration, minus 22.54, minus 1.25 times A, minus 12.25, plus the force normal of the bracket on the pulley. And that's all equal to zero. All right, we'll go ahead and simplify that with 15, 15.68 15 plus 22.54 plus 12.25. All right, so that's going to give me minus 50.47. Okay, then we'll just do these. We got. 1.6 minus 1.25 should have done that in my head. That's 0.35. The bracket on pulley equals zero. Now we could say the force normal of the bracket on the pulley is going to equal to 50.47 minus 0.35a. All right, now we're ready to um, solve this and we're going to find out what that uh, linear acceleration is going to be. All right, now we know from definition that the summation of torques on this pulley torque must equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. All right, what I'm going to do to set to do this, when I do these torques, anything that goes this way is going to be considered positive. Anything that goes back this way is going to be considered negative. So to do the torques, the, we're doing our torques all around this point right here, right in the center pulley. So all I need, I want to be concerned about is going to be this force and this force here. So we'll take the first one and do this one. I will have 15.68 minus 1.6 times my acceleration times the radius. When we go back up and look at the radius, it's 0.248. And the other one's going to be minus because it's going the other way. 
1.25 plus 1.25 times my acceleration times 0.248 I'm going to move this over. I'm going to run out a little bit of space. Just drag this over here to the left and give myself some more space. Must equal to the moment of inertia. Now I've brought in the moment of inertia here. It's mr squared. So we take the mass, which was given as 2.3. Show you where that's coming from again. Mass of the pulley times the radius which is going to be 2.248 we're going to square that times angular acceleration now we know that if I take the angular acceleration and I multiply it by the radius I will always get the tangential acceleration which is the same thing as what A is here in this problem so I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for angular acceleration angular acceleration is nothing more than tangential acceleration I'll leave the T off divided by the radius but now we know the radius so I can say the acceleration is equal to 0.248 okay so I'm going to put it back into that I'll take that out right there I'll do this in blue so you know that I replaced it Okay, now one thing you know is you can really simplify this problem here because I can cancel this out here, I can cancel this out here. But notice I get a 0.248 here, here, and here. If I divide everything by 0.248, that's gone, that's gone, and that's gone here. So now all I have to do is solve this problem here. Now it's going to be a lot simpler problem. I'll just have 15.68 minus 1.6 times acceleration minus 12.25 make sure you distribute that minus 1.25 times acceleration is equal to 2.3 times A note that your only unknown is A bring your A's together solve and you will find out that acceleration is equal to 0.66 meters per second squared. That's how you're going to get the acceleration. Now, if you want to get your tensions, all you have to do is take that value of 0.66 and start putting it back into here. So now I can find out what the force normal of the bracket on the pulley is, and that would equal to, grab the calculator, 50.47. minus 0.35 times 0.66 that would give me a value of 50.24 newtons here now work your way back up if I want to find what T2 is here I take 1.25 times 0.66 plus 12.25 that gives me a value of T2 is equal to 13.075 newtons. And then to find T1, again, pretty straightforward. T1 would equal to 15.68 minus 1.6 times 0.66 <clears throat> gives me 14.62. to 4 newtons. Okay, got that value there. Now to verify I should be able to add these, this one, this one, and this one together and be able to find out what that is. We'll make sure that is right. So 14.624 plus 13.075 plus 22.54 gives me a value of 50.239 and that's approximately the same value. So we know all the math is correct and we have not made a mistake. So again, this is how you solve uh, a problem like this, an Atwood machine, where you want to find the acceleration, you want to find all the torques, excuse me, all the tensions, and then maybe you want to find out what the reaction force is.
Again, I hope this was straightforward. I hope this video was helpful to you. Best of luck with these type of problems.